Okay, so we have solved simultaneous linear equations for the previous page, and we have substitution method and elimination method. Okay, I've go through that with you. But like today, we talk about one special case. So when two linear equations have the same gradient, there will be no intersection point, which means there's no solution. Okay, so what this means? I have a I have to solve simultaneous linear equations. So for example, we have y equals to ax plus b, and I have y equals to ax plus c. I have two equations like that. Okay, y equals to x plus b and y equals to x plus c. I want to solve those two simultaneous linear equations. And if I can sketch those two lines, okay, so you know when we solve simultaneous linear equation, the graphical meaning of the solution is the intersection between the two points, between the two lines, right? So if we want to sketch this line, let's say that's my first linear, ax plus b. And where's ax plus c? ax plus c can be a line here because it's parallel. We have the same gradient. They must have the uh, same gradient but different y-intercepts. So it can be a graph like this blue one. There are two parallel lines. There will have no intersections. Yeah, there will be no intersections. So there's no solution. Okay, so no solution. There's no solution for this y equals to x plus b and y equals to ax plus c. So if two lines are parallel to each other, there will be no solutions. What's your name? Oh. Uh, so for what value of k would this pair of simultaneous equations have no solutions? So I don't have no solutions here. No solution means those two lines must be parallel to each other. If they're not parallel, they will finally intersect somewhere. So there must be a solution to represent that. So they want to have no solutions, which means must be two parallel lines. So how can two lines be parallel? Which means the gradient must be equal. So therefore, the first one must be k equals to negative 4. k equals to negative 4. Okay, for the next one, I don't really know what's the gradient for the first one. So I need to rearrange the equations to make that looks like the gradient intercept form. So I have 3y equals to kx minus k. y will equals to k over 3x minus k over 3. Okay, so the gradient for the first one is 4 and for the second one is k over 3. Those two gradients must be equal to make sure those two lines are parallel. So k equals to 12. k equals to 12. Right? So I find the gradient for the first line is k over 3 and find the gradient for the second line is 4. Those two lines want to be parallel to each other in order to have no solutions. Those two gradients must be equal, which is k over 3 equals to 4 and gives you k equals to 12. Okay, so that's just a special case for simultaneous linear equations. Uh, two simultaneous linear equations not always give you a solution. Sometimes it has no solutions, for example, this case. Okay. So now I want to use linear equations to talk about uh, application question. So let's read example two. A vanilla six shake is $2 more than a fruit juice. If three vanilla six shake and five fruit juice cost $30 in total, determine their individual values or uh, individual prices. So I can make, let fruit juice to be X dollars. Then, Vanilla six shake will be X plus two dollars. Right? So I need to tell people what is X. Okay, you can't directly start to use X. This X must be clarified, like what is it? So it is the fruit juice uh, individual price, so it's X dollars. Then vanilla six shake is $2 more than the 
for truth so vanilla six shake will be x plus two dollars and then we need to set up the equation if three vanilla six shake and five fruit juice cost thirty dollars so three vanilla six shake will be three times x plus two plus two five fruit juice will be five x in total that is thirty dollars so three x plus six plus five x equals to thirty 8x equals to 24 and x equals to 3. Then you need to answer the question. Fruit juice is $3 each. Vanilla six shake is five dollars each because three plus two give you five so vanilla six shake will be five dollars each okay this is an easy one okay this is an easy one let's have a look at next one example three okay two asian armies are one kilometer apart and begin walking towards each other okay there's a um, one army V walk at a pace of three kilometers per hour and the other army M walks at a pace of four kilometers per hour. How long will they walk for uh, before the battle starts? So they are separate one kilometers, like one kilometers apart. When the battle will start? Like in like what they not using nice language, like in the real world, like when they meet each other, right? Just they just meet each other. The war will start. Otherwise, they separate seven hundred meters. They cannot start war like apart seven hundred meters apart. So they must be meet each other. So if they want to meet each other, I can set up equations like okay, that's one kilometers in total. And uh, let's say this army start here. This army start here. I'm walking towards that side and this walking towards that side and this will be four kilometers per hour and three kilometers per hour okay and let's say let's say they meet here okay let's say they meet here let's say they say start here and meet there and the wall start um, it asking us how long will they work okay how long will they work let's say um, they will work X hours before the battle start okay I'll give a variable X okay it's asking for times I will make say time is X hours Okay, then the next question is how we can set up this equation. How we can set up this equation to say um, that e what equals to what? So what equals to what? If you can think about that, I start here and I walk towards that. Both armies in total give walk one kilometers, right? In total they cover one kilometers. Um, and also do you think two armies take the same time when they meet each other? Would it take the same time? Yeah. yeah. I start at the same time and the meet, I finish at the same time. So when I meet, we use the same time to meet each other. Okay, we start from those two ends and we walk, we like expand um, same time. Okay, same time. So if the V and M army both use X hours to meet each other, so what's the distance they traveled? Let's say for this army, what this distance? What's this distance? I can walk three kilometers per hour and I have walked at X hours. What's the distance? The speed is three kilometers per hour and I have walked for X hours. Three X, okay? Speed times time give you the distance. Okay, I start here, I can walk three kilometers per hour and I have walked X hours. I want to see how long how was the distance I have covered, which is 3x. 
Then similarly, this side will be 4x, right? I can work 4 kilometers per hour and I spend x hours. 3 hours and 4 hours, uh, 3 x and 4 x should have 1 add up. Okay, add up should give you 1 because it's the distance they finished, like separately until they meet. So 3x plus 4x will give you 1. So 7x give you 1, x give you 1 on 7. So they will walk for 1 over 7 hour before the battle starts. Before the battle starts, all right. If you finish this one, read the next question, please. Read the next question, please. I think I give this as homework. If I'm not remember, I said wrong. I said read the question and understand the question. Okay, a fruit grower accidentally made a 5% strength chemical. What 5% five, 5 strength chemical means? Say if there's 100 liters of this chemical, how many pure chemicals are there? How many liters of pure chemicals are there? 5 liters, right? If I have 100 liters mixture, if I have 100 mi liters mixture, I will have five liters of the pure chemical inside okay that means five percent stress to spray to use that blah blah, blah. the stress of the spray should be eight percent it actually should be higher okay it should be higher there should be more chemicals inside then he adds pure chemical until the stress reach eight percent by which time the volume is 350 liters how much pure chemicals did he add uh, did he add uh, have to add Okay, the question is, the question is, uh, why add pure chemicals into the mixture, like the 5% uh, strength mixture? The pure chemical volume increase, is that the total volume increase as well? Yeah, that also increased. So, which means volume and pure chemical both increase. Okay, both increase. So, need to make sure that. Okay, it's not only add pure chemicals, add the pure chemical at the same time, the actual volume also increased. Okay, so now it's 350 liters after you add the pure chemical. So what that, which that means, before I add the chemical, there should be less mixtures, right? Less than 350 mixtures. So let's think about what we can do to this question. Okay, what we can do to this question. There's pure chemical, add water, right? I mix them to become mixture. Let's like, say a simple idea like that. Mixture. I have pure chemical here, pour water in, and then mix them, and that become mixture. So I want to ask how much pure chemicals did he add? So let's say he added X liters pure chemical. Okay, X liters of pure chemical. Let's suppose this. We have this container here. And before we have we have water and pure chemicals inside. That's five percent of the pure chemical. Right? That's five percent of the pure chemical. And then, next thing, I add pure chemical to that. 
Okay. Let's say that's the total volume. That's the total. Until the black line is the total volume. I don't know how much are there. How much are there? But like that's the mixture. I just separate. Okay. Let's suppose all pure chemicals here, all waters here, and then I pour pure chemicals in. So I'll pour another x liters of the pure chemical. Okay, x liters of the pure chemical. So from here to here. I have 350 liters, okay? After I add pure chemicals, from here to here, I have 350 liters. So my question is, what's the volume I have here? Let's write on this side. Uh, I'll use a black color. What is this value should be? Yeah, 350 minus x liters. Okay, that should be the volume. And the next thing I want to think about is, what's the volume here? Can you see this purple thing I have drawn here? Anyone can find the volume here. Remember, before I add x liters, all below this part, there are 5% strengths. 5% strengths. Which means volume times 5% will give you the volume of the pure chemical, right? That's 5% strength means. 5% times the pure chemical uh, times the mixture should give you the pure chemical, what you have. So what's the volume for this mixture? 350 minus minus x yeah minus x that's the volume and it's five percent it's five percent so here should be five percent times 350 minus x that's the volume of the mixture before times the five percent stress is what originally the volume you have for the chemical Okay, that part, the small part is what you originally had for the chemical. Okay, after I pour the chemicals in, after I pour the chemicals in, so I have here to here, they are all chemicals. So how much I have here? How much I have here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, eight percent of the eight percent of which volume? Yeah, so it's eight percent over three hundred fifty grams. Okay, three eight percent of that is what you have now. Okay, what you have now. So I can set up the equation now. So now the screen bit got 8% times 350 is equivalent to the 5% times 350 minus x plus x. Right? I have this part is this and this part is x. So x plus that should give you the volume here. And at the same time, this part of volume also equals 350 times 8% of that strength. So I can set up the equation by this way, right? So we can solve the equation and find the x, and that's the volume, right? That's the volume. So how we can solve for that? 350, 3.5 times 8, 28. Five percent times three, uh, three hundred fifty minus five percent x plus x. I will subtract that to the side. Is ten point five equals to ninety five percent of x. Okay, 
95% equals to 95 over 100 divided by 5 on both top and bottom 19 over 20 so it's 10.5 equals to 19 over 20 x and x will equal to 10.5 times 20 over 19 Yeah, 20 over 19, so 105 times 2, 210. So x is 210 over 19. Okay, 210 over 19. at 210 over 19 liters of pure chemical.